Welcome to Wyatt's Rotation, Cooldowns, and Abilities Guide for Holy Paladin Healer and Wrath of the Lich King Classic. This guide will provide a list of recommended spell rotations to maximize your effectiveness in raids and dungeons, as well as list your most important cooldowns. Best PV Rotation for Holy Paladin Healer and Wrath of the Lich King. Holy Paladins have always been a tank healer throughout Classic, and Wrath is no different however. The inclusion of Beacon of Light makes your target selection somewhat interesting. Beacon of Light ensures that no matter who you heal, you always be healing the tank which means that on single tank fights, you assist in raid healing, while on multi-tank fights, you generally be healing multiple tanks simultaneously. Unfortunately, your actual healing toolkit is still very small, limited only to Holy Light, Flash of Light, and Holy Shot. But there's an additional depth in managing your buff up time as well as general target selection, Stop particularly casting. to maximize Glyph of Holy Light and therefore Soul Preserver procs. Lastly, Holy Paladin is one of the most mana constrained healers in the game. Playing the spec requires constant monitoring of your resources and decision making to see what trade offs and risks you can afford to make sure your mana can last a fight. Unlike DPS, healers do not have a set rotation. The heal you choose to use will depend on a few factors, but for Holy Paladin as mentioned the selection is small and therefore a much smaller part of decision making than target selection. The following sections will attempt to categorize and define these situations in as much detail as reasonably possible. It's highly recommended that you familiarize yourself with the entire spell list and toolkit listed near the bottom of this page first, as it'll help you internalize the logic behind how to heal any situation. Holy Paladin Healer oh, Proposed Set Beacon of Light Cast Beacon of Light on an ideal two. target One. Typically be the primary oh, tank Sacred Shield that Cast Sacred works. Shield on an ideal target Typically the primary tank Keep in mind you need to work out Sacred Shield priority with multiple Paladins and Raid Optional Holy Light It can be a good idea to cast Holy Light before combat begins to get the Light's Grace buff up on fights where you need to output big healing quickly Drink immediately, begin drinking to offset the mana cost of your cast. Ideally, you enter combat with full mana and maximum duration on Beacon of Light plus Sacred Shield. Optional per pot for fights that open with very high damage output. You may consider per potting with a portion of speed for maximum throughput. Judgment as the boss is being cool, you want to immediately get the judgments of the pure buff. Due to the very high cost of Beacon of Light as well as the long durations of both of these buffs, it's ideal to Still cast costly. these well before combat Fine. even begins. Additionally, getting these buffs up before combat begins minimizes the number of non-healing time that you have throughout a given fight. In contrast, oh getting the Light's Grace buff up is less important. While it's a very important buff, the first few seconds of most boss fights involve very little damage and generally allow you to easily get your Light's Grace buff rolling early. During this time, you will also want to gauge whether or not it's possible to stay in melee range for the fight as well. If there is no significant penalty to being in melee range, you will always want to do so for Seal of Wisdom Prize, and you will want to be running in as you get your judgments of the pure buff, Holy Paladin Healer Priority List. Due to the number of maintenance buffs, it's easiest to think about what you should be doing as a priority list. The general priority is as follows. Beacon of Light always keep oh, this up on like the person so who will take the most consistent damage. You may need to swap these on tanks while fights accordingly. Judgments of the Pure always keep this up. Sacred Shield always keep this up on your assigned target. Divine Plea check your Divine Plea cooldown and the remaining oh, fight length generally approximated by boss HP to see if you will be needing to use Divine Plea to finish the fight. Still Holy casting. Light spam when all maintenance Fine. buffs are up and mana is accounted for. Oh, Maximize really Holy Light spam on appropriate targets. The spec is certainly not complicated in actual play. As long as your maintenance buffs are kept up, you will generally I want to be keeping up a steady stream of no. Holy Light healing on the raid or non-beacon of light tanks. On movement, you use Holy Shock and Slash or Instant Flash of Light, or refresh your maintenance buffs if Holy Shock is on cooldown. Stop, After this, gameplay mainly revolves around managing your mind. The primary source of this is Divine Plea, and the following section covers that in exhaustive detail. During low periods of damage, you can choose to judge more frequently. Judgment hits have an equal chance of proxing Seal of Wisdom as your melees do. 
and you are almost always melee when you judge unless your weapon speed is slower than 1.8. You can also throttle your healing by using Holy Shot, which will also net you occasional melees with high enough haste, or casting Flash of Light instead of Holy Light and low damage periods. The main skill ceiling of the spec beyond this is the usage of the many cooldowns and raid utility spells Holy Paladin has, covered in the next section. Cooldowns for Holy Paladin Healer and Wrath of the Lich King. Holy Paladins have the most cooldowns in the game and Wrath and utilizing them correctly is a major part of the skill expression of the spec. While you may not always find a use for all of these cooldowns on every fight, most of them are universally good and checking your own usage of them is one of the easiest ways to improve as a healer. Or Master only doubles the base effect of your current orb, not any talented upgrades. For example, using or mastery on devotion or with improved devotion or talent it will only increase the armor to 2410 rather than 3615, and it does not affect the increased healing portion at all. Very powerful when you're able to do it on resistance or is roughly 10% raid damage reduction. Mediocre on devotion or, but often you have no other option to or mastery. Lay on hand, don't be afraid to use this as often as possible in wrath as it no longer drains all your mana. If you're struggling a lot with mana on a particular fight, you can self-lay on hands to restore a bunch of mana, especially with Glyph of Divinity, Divine Sacrifice, the best raid cooldown in the game. You mostly use this for the Divine Guardian portion. You can either cancel or the Divine Sacrifice buff, as it can batch and leap for the 20% HP break to kill you or use Divine Shield to mitigate the sacrifice damage. It can be used as a small tank cooldown in a pinch. Hand of Freedom, Hand of Protection, Hand of Sacrifice, Hand of Salvation. Now you don't have to read blessings after casting. Always let to use these when applicable. Avenging Wrath, powerful throughput cooldown, but can't be used for the first 30 seconds of forbearance. Divine Illumination, good mana cooldown that should be used as often as possible generally want to delay first usage slightly so you don't overcap with your first divine plate. Divine Faith, a minor healing cooldown that you should use on either Holy Shock or Holy Light when you need a small burst of healing, mostly off cooldown. Holy Paladin Healer Divine Plea Usage, this is a primary mechanic you will be playing around for all of Wrath on every single fight. The simple question is, when do I use Divine Plea? In general, you'll want to think ahead and see if the fight has any noticeable gaps or downtime where tank damage taken, or raid damage taken, is very low. A good example of this is on Thaddeus, where you have considerable downtime after phase 1. On many fights, though, there will not be any downtime, and you will have to divine plea during regular damage phases just to ensure that you don't go out of mana before the fight ends. In this case, there are several schools of thought all of which are viable. A primary method to offset the 50% healing reduction from Divine Plea is to use a high throughput cooldown, such as Avenging Wrath. During it, these effects stack multiplicatively, meaning that you heal for roughly 60% when both effects are up. Another method is to have your other healers track and play around your Divine Pleas, especially if you are allowed to refresh your non-healing maintenance buffs such as Sacred Shield, Beacon of Light, and judgments of the pure during the duration of divine plea. The healing reduction effect is comparatively less dire, but keep in mind that doing this regularly is a severe loss in effectiveness as a holy paladin, and your tank can be in critical danger if you don't heal from multiple GCDs in a row. No. The main takeaway here is that you should constantly be thinking ahead to when your next divine plea will happen, and how you will be playing within it. Up to a quarter of your time will be spent within the divine plea window, so you need to get into the habit of constantly thinking about how to play around it. Holy Paladin Healer Melee Mechanics The other powerful tool that Holy Paladin has in Wrath to manage their mana is Seal of Wisdom. With a standard 1.8 speed weapon most raid healing weapons in Wrath, you have a 45% chance to proc Seal of Wisdom every melee, as well as on any judgment cast. Additionally, most instant cast spells that Holy Paladins have do not reset the swing time of with the notable exception of Beacon of Light. This means that you will want to try and be in melee as much as possible on every fight possible, as long as you're not required by fight mechanics to stay out. Additionally, it means mouse over healing is fully non-optional, as you need to have an enemy targeted at all times to try and get melee swings off. In essence, 
anytime there is forced movement or downtime, you will want to be auto attacking something to try and get mana returns, while the proc chance is not high. Especially considering you are not hit or expertise cap, it can be a potentially major source of mana returns, particularly during dungeons and trash, you will want to try and refill your mana pool so you minimize drinking downtime. Abilities for Holy Paladin Healer and Wrath of the Lich King Primary healing abilities and procs Holy like this is your bread and butter spell. By far your most efficient, powerful spell that also costs a ton of mana and casts rather slowly. It's also the main proc source for Glyph of Holy Light, an extremely important way to feed into additional soul preserver procs that help mitigate the cost of this spell. In general, you want to maximize your effective casts of this spell throughout any encounter as a steady stream of holy lights is the best way to keep tanks alive in what up okay. flash of light just like in tbc extremely mana efficient fast heal that doesn't do a lot of healing try to avoid using as much as possible in a raid situation you want to prefer managing mana via divine plea instead holy shock majorly buffed compared to tbc with a much shorter cooldown and bigger heal a somewhat hidden bonus of this spell is that like most instant cast spells in the holy paladin toolkit it doesn't reset your swing timer meaning that with enough haste your character can sneak in an auto attack swing whenever you holy shock while in melee range of a boss this chance to proc seal of wisdom somewhat indirectly offsets the mana cost making holy shock a surprisingly effective way to conserve mana at higher haste levels infusion of life a holy light buff is somewhat mediocre and the flash of light buff is very situational right. however this instant cast flash of light doesn't reset the swing timer which means that just like Holy Shock's hidden benefit, you may yes. find yourself getting extra melee swings and restoring more mana whenever you they choose watch. to use Infusion of Light for the instant flash of light instead of continuing the Holy Light. That being said, you generally don't play around this proc too much nor does it majorly affect your decision making as just a nice bonus whenever you do need to Holy Shock or more. Maintenance buffs. Beacon of Light you want to keep this up at all times. Preferably on the target who will take the most consistent damage during a fight. It's also extremely expensive 1538 base cost at 80 so you want to avoid having to swap it a lot before it's worn off. You never want to directly heal your beacon of light, as getting your heal duplicated is a major part of what makes Holy Paladin super powerful in wrath. However, it does not transfer healing done from anything other than Holy Light, Flash of Light, Holy Shock, and lay on hands that is to say any glyph or talent effects as well as judgment of light trinket heals or gift of the gnar will not be duplicated through beacon of light judgments of the pure encourages you to judge at least once a minute with a very powerful buff keep in mind you only have four percent chance to hit through talents so you still have a small chance for your judgment to miss and therefore not refresh the buff for this reason you want to judge about every 45-50 seconds rather than wait until the last second if possible, as that unlucky streak can make you lose a very noticeable amount of haste for several casts. Sacred Shield an extremely powerful spell that provides a ton of healing over its duration and in very low cost by far the most mana efficient heal in the kit. Refreshing the buff doesn't reset the ICD, so you can do it anytime you get a chance. The main limitation is that only one Paladin's Sacred Shield can be active per person. Seal of Wisdom the main reason for why you want to be in melee whenever possible. With a 1.8 speed weapon most spell power one-handers in Wrath, you have a 45% chance to proc this seal every time you land a successful melee or judgment. Divine Plea your main source of mana returns in Wrath. You often need to use this on cooldown due to the immense mana strain of Holy Paladin. Learning when to delay it or to time it well is a major part of the skill ceiling for the spec. Defensive abilities. Holy Wrath and Instant AoE Stunt for Undead is very useful in some raid encounters. Very situational, but an important tool to remember. Hammer of Justice occasionally used for some raid encounters with ads, as well as on trash. Divine Protection major personal defensive on a medium length cooldown. Divine Shield can be used to avoid having to move for mechanic. She's certain mechanics, etc. Good way to reliably survive the damage redirection of Hand of Sacrifice or Divine Sacrifice as well. 